Richard Southern joins us for our daily business chat. And Richard, it's been a busy past couple of months for Canadian Airlines. Yeah, I mean, they're getting really busy. People are flying again, Erica. Flying in such numbers, as a matter of fact, the WestJet and Air Canada are really short on staff all of a sudden. So short that they are asking for volunteers to help them out. Yes, in an email to employees, WestJet described the staffing shortages as, uh, well, pretty uh, severe, apparently. They're, uh, they're quite acute at the Calgary hub for WestJet. And so they're asking for volunteers uh, to help out uh, doing things like, you know, helping with uh, customers who need wheelchair assistance and whatnot. This was first reported by the CBC, but later confirmed by WestJet. Air Canada says it also needs extra personnel at Toronto Pearson because, quote, airport partners are stressed beyond their capacity. Uh, unions, though, representing airline workers are advising their members to avoid volunteering. Uh, Erica, workplace lawyers and experts, they say there's nothing illegal about asking employees to volunteer, but it creates some ethical situations. You know, if the boss were to say to you, hey, uh, would you mind volunteering? You kind of feel inclined to say yes, don't you? Right. Yes, exactly. You're going to say no to your boss. It's, it gets awkward, right? So. Yeah. You know, the airlines, they let so many people go during the pandemic. They're starting to bring them back, but apparently not fast enough. So mm -hmm. that's what's going on with WestJet and Air Canada right now. All right. And uh, reaction continues to pour in surrounding a story we covered yesterday about Ontario's pandemic spending. You've been following this, Richard. Yeah, it was the, uh, the, the fiscal watchdog, the uh, Financial Accountability Office, said yesterday that the Ford government didn't spend any of the $2.7 billion COVID-19 uh, response transfer payment in the second quarter. That's from April to June. They didn't spend any of the $2.7 billion, some of which came from the federal government. The Ford government in a statement yesterday told me that the claim that no spending occurred was not accurate because it wasn't recorded at the time. They said doesn't mean it didn't happen. So I wanted to ask the FAO about that response from the Ford government. Here's the chief financial officer. I think perhaps they've spent that money and are going to send an invoice to the province. But factually, as of June 30th, no checks have been cut from that program. They have not spent any money from that program. That doesn't mean that they won't get, you know, bills for activities that occurred during that quarter. Of course, the NDP, again, wasting no time trying to pounce on this one. The uh, finance critic for the NDP says, quote, Doug Ford is putting off fighting COVID-19 because he doesn't want to spend that money. And the rest of us are paying a massive price for it. Uh, the minister in charge of this, Prambit Sakaria, the head of the Treasury Board, uh, Erica, uh, I asked him for an interview, and uh, for a second day in a row, the office said no. So we'll continue to stay on this one. All right. And finally, millions of Canadians are still working from home, and in many cases, that probably means a longer work week. Yeah, it turns out those who have been at home for the past 18 months have worked maybe longer than they've ever worked before. New study by, by Microsoft uh, out today. This was actually reported in the uh, Journal of Nature, which found that the average work week for those at home is 10% longer now than before the pandemic when they were in the office. Researchers think uh, the increase uh, could uh, be an indication that employees were are less productive at home and therefore need more time to work. Or uh, it, it may be the case that they've replaced their commuting time with working. Could also be the case they say that the amount of time working is spread across a greater share of the day due to breaks and interruptions from non-work activities. Erica, a number of big organizations are pushing back the return to the office. TD Bank just said it's not going to ask its employees to come back until the new year.